Right, we are back. <laughs> um, sorry, that was a problem on my end. Skype suddenly died, and no. things happen. Okay. Um, so I think we have time for the last question. I uh, still had some other things I wanted to discuss, but we'll do that some other time. Uh, that's the question here. It's a very long story. I'll read it out loud. The question is about the art of dreaming. The Toltecs believe that the art of dreaming uh, should be practiced to uh, yeah, become aware within the dream. And it is mentioned by Carlos Castaneda that there are four important yeah, gates or stages of dreaming. Um, the first gate of dreaming is the stabilization of the dreaming body. I completely agree with this. Um, I would define it slightly differently. Um, here it is defined when one perceives one, one's hands in a dream. Um, the problem is solved or the transition is made when one is able to shift the focus from the hands to another dream object and return it to the hands, all repeated a few times. It is crossed when one is able to induce a state of darkness and a feeling of increased weight of falling asleep. Um, so the important thing here is that, um, in a way, your will should be, trans should be strong enough and on a high enough level that it works on your astral body. This is basically the essence of the first stage of dreaming. Um, because generally if we dream we go into a higher world, a higher vibration of a higher part of our astral bodies. And if our will is in a very low level, like, okay, I want food, I'm hungry, um, I want to have sex, I want to uh, see a nice movie, I want some attention, all these lower earthly vibrations in our will, um, they make our dreams completely uncontrolled, because we cannot take that will with us, it only works through our subconsciousness in creating wish-fulfilling dreams. But ultimately, if we start to develop a real desire to grow spiritually, to experience higher worlds, to interact with higher beings, then the vibration of our will becomes higher. And then our willpower can affect our astral bodies. And this is basically the first stage of the dream. And one of the signs can be that, indeed, as you are in your dream, and that the astral body is reacting to your willpower, is reacting to your consciousness, and you're able to um, transform yourself uh, or transform the world in response to your willpower. So that is yeah, really uh, the first gate. And what is uh, said about the state of darkness and feeling of increased weight is also because um, the relaxation of the body will be a lot deeper because more energy will be transformed out of the body into the astral body. So the uh, physical body itself will go in a much more yeah, dead-like state because more and more energy will transform into the astral. And usually when you get about 50% of the yeah, energy which is connected to the awareness going into the dream body, then you really start to have very conscious, very clear dreams or trance journeys. And slowly but surely you can increase this percentage by trying and also while being in, the, in this dream, trying to pull more energy and more power to try to get more powerful while you're in the dream. And that also pulls energies out of the body. But this is often a difficult process because the energy you pull out of the body can be of a lower vibration which brings you into a really low astral state where you see lots of larva and pick up lot, yeah, bad agricores and stuff like that. So try not to do that too much, but slowly but surely purify the energies of your body and then transfer them into your dream body. So the second uh, gate of dreaming 
is utilizing the dreaming body, which happens when one's dreams object starts changing into something else. This happens when one is able to fall asleep without losing consciousness to go to the realm of inorganic beings. Yeah, it is a rather cryptical description. I would um, <laughs> state it rather differently. Um, I would say that the second stage of dreaming is when you um, start going into a shared reality. Oh. Uh, I thought that's a remark. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it, it happens when you uh, start to go into an objective part of the astral world. So um, if you yeah, have an ordinary dream, you go into a little pocket dimension, a little pockets of the astral world, which is basically shaped by you. It is just um, yeah, a feminine energy which is responding and reflecting back your own energy. And once you start to go into a higher level, a higher vibration, you go more and more into towards the collective. And as you move towards the collective, it becomes possible for your dream space to be shared with other beings. And these other beings can be of lower vibrations, which can be indeed like inorganic beings, um, beings from very simple cosmoses, very simple egregores. Um, but it can also be uh, start to be higher beings, like from plants and animals. And ultimately it yeah, progresses into sharing your dreams with yeah, saints, angels, um, spiritual masters, uh, ascended teachers, <laughs> enlightened beings. So, um, the second stage of dreaming is indeed um, that stage of sharing, and often that sharing uh, is is shown in the dream by having a co-directorship. Instead of everything just reflecting you, um, uh, something you see, like for instance a dog, can be like partly controlled by you. It's a reflection of your energy, but it can also partly be a reflection of some other being's energy. So maybe your guide wants to talk to you. And that will yeah, make the dog talk or make the dog spread wings to show you something or to bring your attention to it. And then it is like having control of your creation. You still create your own dream world, but you allow other beings to use the virtual reality you've created to interface with you. So then the third stage of dreaming I would agree with is indeed uh, traveling uh, as an out-of-body experience. The out-of-body experience is really when you stop in, in a way dreaming and you go on a trance journey where you feel that in a way the, uh, the dream reality or the energetic reality is at that moment at least more real or more substantial uh, to you than the physical reality. And once in a way enough of your energy has transferred into that collective space and also the things you do and which happen to you in that collective space um, will alter your energy body. If you have enough energy to work with, enough life force to work with, then you can actually learn things and gain powers and talents in your dreams or in your trance journeys and you can come back from your dreams different. And different can be in a good way or in a bad way depending on what you do in your dreams. Because if you go into a collective world also bad things can happen to you. Um, generally dreaming is quite safe compared to trance traveling because in dreaming you go to where your own energy uh, vibration takes you. So if your own energy vibration is good you just get to a place which is very similar. If you're trance journeying your intention takes you to where your intention takes you. And if you're having a lot of negative emotions or anger or other things, you can go into a much lower world. Um, so the fourth gate of dreaming, uh, Carlos Castaneda says, is sharing, which is being able to share the intended dream reality of other people. 
um, one has to have gathered enough strength into the dream embodied through the previous gates in order to travel to other people's dreams. Uh, yes, this is also very true. Uh, it is not merely about strength, but it is also very much about the quality of the heart, the development of um, your ability to adapt to other people's energies, to attune to their spirit, to their um, vision of reality. Uh, so it is really not so much about strength, but rather about wisdom, uh, about flexibility. Um, to dream together is uh, um, is something which is useful um, because you can share a lot of knowledge, a lot of power. You can make agreements and exchange energies, so you can in a way pool energies as a group. So many mystery schools they also had collective dreaming. Also people who are uh, attuned to the same god or goddess, they also tend to dream collectively or people who are attuned to the same egregore, to the same saint, they can often also meet, yeah, meet collectively. And many of these gods, goddesses, holy places, egregores, um, have in a way a dream domain where people of that place can gather. And this makes it a lot easier to, uh, to yeah, enter other people's dreams than it would otherwise be. Um, I have personally also use these dreams or these dream techniques also to uh, teach people things. Um, I find it it's a very effective method so usually by visiting a person in their dreams about two or three times I see really a marked change in insight or behavior uh, even though the person might not recall it that they've even had these lessons. Um, so yeah it's a very powerful technique in, uh, to use dreaming. Uh, it can also be used in a harmful way, uh, invading other people's dreams. So, but yeah, if you're developing it as a, as a skill, and many masters have these skills and use it to visit their students in their dreams, just to monitor them and to see what energy level they're at. Um, so it's very common to see your spiritual master or teacher in your dream. Um, so, could I elaborate on this topic? I just did. <laughs> uh, with my experience, I've shared a bit of that. Um, and the different realms we may encounter. Yeah, I personally find that um, first you go into your own personal dream realm, dream, dream space, which is very nice, very safe. Uh, moving into the collective is often um, a bit of a daunting step I find uh, because people often are scared back into their own little individual space rather than moving into the collective because in the collective things are no longer in your control so often there's a lot of fear connected to it um, the loss of control the yeah and also moving further out of your body losing in a way your life force to your dream body also brings fear of death with it so this transition from personal dream space into collective dream space is often quite difficult, quite challenging. Um, the first transition of moving into the first dreaming is basically yeah, working with intention a lot. And also praying and meditating before you go to sleep so that your energies are high enough to transfer easily to the, to the dream body. Um, Moving into the whole trance state, the third stage, I would say is very much uh, a talent which people either possess or they don't possess. Um, because for some people the energy body is relatively inflexible and or very tightly bound to the physical body. And for them it's very hard to become dreamers who really can go into the higher dream realms or move enough energy out of the physical body to have intense enough dream experiences. Uh, so I would basically say it's just not for all people and the easiest way to determine that is to look at the cocoon um, because there is a like a dream apron there is a structure in front of the third chakra um, which shows if the energy is flowing more down into the physical world or more up into higher dimensions and if this 
yeah, structure is very big, very strong, then a lot of the energy is deflected into higher dimensions, and then you're stronger in these higher dimensions, but weaker in the physical dimensions. So you're probably less good at your work, practical stuff, dealing with paperwork, um, finding money, eating healthy, um, all the other practical stuff, because your energy is just up there. So every yeah, structure has advantages, and I usually believe that you should follow the choices you made before you incarnated and accept your karma in having either yeah, easy access to a dream body or not. And of course, if you do have that talent, you should develop it. So definitely the third or fourth stages, I would say, are optional. And only four people who, um, who have that talent. But the first two stages, I think, can be achieved by everybody. And it is also very good for everybody to try to achieve that. To get access to at least your personal guides or other help, spirit helpers, uh, at least in your dreams, if you can't have that on while you're conscious. Um, the fourth stage of moving into other people's dreams, I don't think it's that valuable or that necessary unless you're actually going into a teaching role yourself. Um, what I found in my experiences in trying to visit other people in their dreams is that usually they were busy. Uh, if you try to meet other people who are also relatively advanced, during the night they're also busy visiting egregores, doing different tasks, learning different things, so they don't have time for you. It is their busiest time of the day when they're dreaming <laughs> on an energetic level. So, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, if you, you can in a way double time by um, working on yourself both while you're awake and while you're asleep. So this does speed up your spiritual advancement. But personally I found that my consciousness was being overloaded by, memory, by having the memories of all the day I had to process and the memories of all the things which happened into my astral body which I had to process. So ultimately I had to make a deal with my guides and to block my own memories from yeah, my dream journeys and my dream experiences unless they're necessary just to prevent my brain from becoming too stressed and overloaded and having a burnout. Um, so there is a limited capacity also to your yeah, physical consciousness and respect that because if you're not resting your consciousness and it's all the time stimulated both in your dreams and while you're awake you can go a little bit insane. Uh, so I'm already going into the next part of the question. Could I discuss the negative side of dreaming? <laughs> and uh, a little bit about when you're unprotected and can be harmed during your sleep. Uh, well, the first thing is of course uh, trying to protect the physical body because the more energy leaves your physical body the more vulnerable it becomes to attracting parasites. It's the same or even worse when you're sick or asleep or stressed or exhausted. And the same goes when you're dreaming more intensely because you're taking more energy out of the physical body. So the aura weakens, the life force weakens and thereby uh, physical diseases can become yeah, more strong. Also energetical parasites can flourish and thrive. Um, so dreaming has a price and the toll it takes on the life force and the physical body if it is not done well. You can compensate this by dreaming towards healing spaces or going towards your own subconscious where you can clear out a lot of blockages. Um, yeah, so that negative part of you can be, in a way, also turned into a positive part. I see more. Okay. Yeah. Um, so another, um, so an important thing is when you want to do dream practices, make sure that the physical body is protected. So you can wear an amulet or some other protective charm on the body while you're sleeping. 
and also clean the energy in the bedroom or this place where you're doing the trance journey. Ideally you would sleep in a holy place, um, yeah, next to your altar or yeah, in maybe a protective circle, um, inside a pentagram or indeed in a life where your life force is very much sustained or replenished. So a place where yeah, there's a lot of nature energy in the forest. So as to the best position uh, to yeah, be dream journeying in, it is actually while you're lying on your back so that the energies entering into your body are coming directly from the earth. If you're lying on your belly then astral energies can enter into your body much more easily and you're more vulnerable to um, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Um, so it depends a little bit on how you want to dream because sometimes you want to invite maybe a protector or a healing spirit to take care of your body while you're dreaming and then it's better to lie indeed on your side or on your belly. Uh, so that's another method you can use to just invite an animal spirit or other protective spirit to take care of the body. Um, other protections, well yeah, it's kind of difficult to protect the, uh, the astral body which you use while sleeping. Uh, the main thing is having a good vibration so you do not attract the wrong attention. Uh, that's the most important thing. Uh, the other thing is also if things go wrong, if you become trapped or captured, uh, scare yourself. Uh, because if you make yourself afraid, then often the instinct is that your energy body will want to retreat to a place where it is safe. And uh, lower vibrations are more stable, are better protected, so you will pull yourself out of your dream body and pull the energy back into your physical body and into the lower chakras of the physical body. So the energy will turn into life force again. So scaring yourself, running away back into your body is what to do if something nasty happens to you in your, in your sleep. Uh, it can be that part of your energy body is taken or ripped apart or stolen from you while you sleep. These things happen and it will have to regrow. Um, in such cases when you really feel attacked it's sometimes also good to yeah, place icons or other protective charms. And you generally want to have powers which don't just act on just the physical level, but can also act on astral levels. Um, so you generally want you know, powers which can protect you also against magic or curses or spirits or uh, with, yeah, specialties like this. Um, one of the things I personally tend to forget, but which are, is probably the best method of security, is to ask guardians of crossroads to basically close your dream space off to nasty powers and make sure that your energy body doesn't go into places where it might get trapped. So ask powers of the crossroads, Hecate, uh, Papa Legba, Elegba, uh, Saint Peter, um, um, Anubis, uh, these are all gods and goddesses which assure you that the wrong powers have no access to you and that you can only go to places which are safe to you. And yeah, asking for their protection for yeah, sleeping in general and dream journeys in particular uh, is very wise. Um, so the last part and then I'll really sign off because it's been a long lesson already. Um, is it also true that it's better not to have crystals in your bedroom, as these might block you? And try to, when you try to turn back into your body after travel, and they can harm the emotional body. Uh, yeah, I would not advise crystals while you're sleeping in general. Um, crystals have a very fixed energy, a very fixed vibration. Um, and as such they are inflexible and they therefore require you to adapt to them rather than they adapting to you. So ideally you would also not have metal in your bed or around your bed. Uh, it is best to have natural materials um, yeah, which you're sleeping in um, 
so things like silk, wool, wood, um, cotton, um, they're perfect, and yeah, foam, rubber, plastic, uh, really less, yeah, less good. Um, because the energy body, especially during dreaming, can go through rapid transformations. And anything which holds you back, and that's in that way also protective charms, can have a negative side effect. Um, crystals which are safe to use are crystals which are generally just supporting or raising your vibration. So not all crystals are bad, but um, generally the more advanced crystals are, uh, are much more useful than the primitive ones. Um, you can use, for instance, Labradorite to make the energy body a bit more stable. Uh, but yeah, then you also get less benefit from the dream. So I think with crystals it, it would be very much a choice, like do you need the stability? Then use crystals, because I do also advise some people who really awaken completely exhausted from their dreams because they're having too many adventures. I advise them to use crystals, um, like um, uh, rock crystal, quartz, Rutilated quartz to stabilize their energy bodies because dreaming at night and having a busy job at day can be too much for some people. So yeah, crystals are a bit of a double-edged blade. Okay, well, I think it's been a quite long lesson and thank you all for the lovely questions. Okay, I see some remarks coming up. Okay. Oh. Um, yeah, and I hope I'll see some more questions for uh, next month. Okay. Bye bye.